I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you to our house of praise worship service. There is a word from the Lord. This is to encourage everyone. Those that are here under the sound of my voice, those that will be watching by YouTube later on today. Amen. And those that are saved or not saved, God made us all. And I want to encourage you with this lesson today. God loves his children. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God Amen. loves his children. Yeah, he and because he loves us, he wants us to do certain things, not to be saved, just to keep us in better standing and enjoy life. Life is a gift. You know, life is a gift. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you got a lot of people going through life and they catching hell, and it's not because of God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so life is not always fair, too. Sometimes life throws a hard ball. Mm -hmm. And when life throws you a hard ball, you know what you're supposed to do with it? Hit a home run. Amen. 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 But when you mess with me, Amen. I ain't going to get you. I'm going to call on God. I'm going to go on my yeah. knees and I'm going to pray. Yeah. Because God right. say vengeance is mine. He say he'll take care of all that's your it. enemies. That's right. But when you try to take care of your enemies, God ain't going to do nothing but sit back and watch that's you play it. God. All right. He right. said, I want oh, to yeah. be kind yeah. to your enemies. That's right. But those that cast your name out as evil, I know it's hard to do. He yeah. said, be kind to them and pray for them. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Come Just on. like we wouldn't always kind to God. And he Amen. was kind to us. Amen. Right. Come on, but man. the title is called God Love His Children. And I got several points I want to make. Look at your neighbor and say, then he's going to let us go. God wants his children to be saved. First of all, if I love you. If you love anybody, you want the best for them, don't yeah. you? Right. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. 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 If I love my wife on anniversary day, she don't want no ring from the wash tear bubble gum machine. Mm -hmm. You could have done better than that, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> you got a job, you work from the bubble gum machine. A little plastic ring, and you say you love him. Give God his best. Yeah. Amen. Give God your best. He gives you his best. Amen. Amen. God loves his children. So the first thing he wants is his, all his children to be saved. Now, I don't want you to turn. I'm just quote the scripture. 2 Peter 3 9. Say, The Lord is not slack concerning his son. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. But is long suffering to us. Not willing that any should perish, but all. Come to repent. God want all his children to be what? Saved. Because that's the best gift. First, I got to get that's you saved. Right. That's right. God love his children. God want his children to be saved. Number two, God want his children to be knowledgeable. He wants you to be knowledgeable of him and his word. The more you know about people, the better off you can serve them. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's right. The more you know about people. You know my. You know why a lot of people break up? Because they see the other side of that person they thought was so nice and kind. Amen. Amen. God wants his children to be knowledgeable. The Bible said we ought to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of your God. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. then it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true hope. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. When you come into the family of God, Give up the old way of thinking and take on a new way of thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that new way of thinking is going to benefit you spiritually. Amen. So God loves his children. Amen. God wants his children to be saved. And God wants his children to be what? Knowledgeable. Yeah. Knowledgeable. Right. Now this is one of my favorite ones. Number three. God wants his children to be nurtured. Nurtured. He wants to take care of you. Jesus asked Peter a question. He said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. Lambs right. are his babies. That's right. yeah. That's then right. he asked Peter again. He said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know all things. He said, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. So God wants his children to be nurtured. In other words, God wants you to be taken care of. The young ones and the older ones. Mm -hmm. That's right. And there are a difference between lambs and sheep. Mm -hmm. You know the difference between a lamb and a sheep? Lambs are less than 12 months old. Yeah. So God want to make sure all his babies taken care of. That's right. That's right. Adult sheep are 12 months or older. Okay. Adult females are called oohs. Adult males are called rams. Mm. Lambs typically weigh about 8 to 12 pounds. Adult sheep weigh 200 pounds or more. Mm -hmm. 
hands stand between two and four feet tall. Lambs are born toothless. They develop small teeth called milk teeth that are comfortable for nursing mother sheep. Weaning begins 10 weeks and three months and the milk teeth fall out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By age one, sheep have two large teeth. Okay. They develop a full set of eight adult teeth between three and four years old. So God told Peter to feed my lamb mm -hmm. and feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Which means no matter what age you are, God want to nurture you and take care of you. Yeah. That's because right. he will love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. Lambs drink only milk until they are weaned. Mm -hmm. Adult sheep are herbivores. They eat grass, plants, and grains. Mm -hmm. With diets made up of grassy hay and grains are commercial concentrates. They both God's children, just at different levels. So God yeah. want to take care of his children and his babies. Yeah. Ain't that nice? Yeah. God yeah. loves his children. He wants you to be safe. He wants you to be knowledgeable. And he wants you to be neutral. Mm -hmm. God wants his two children to be in a positive relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. God wants his children to be in a positive relationship with him. And how do I know? Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 5. John 15, 5. God wants his children to be in a positive relationship with him. John chapter 15. And we're going to look at verse 5. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. It says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringing forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do what? Nothing. nothing. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branch. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you abide in me, and I in you, you shall bring forth what? Much fruit. He wants you to be in a positive relationship with him. Now look at verse 2 in the same chapter. He says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So he says, If you're not fruitful or not in a good relationship with me, he purge it and take it away because it's not bearing no fruit. So God wants you to be in a positive relationship with me, with him. Amen. God wants his children to be blessed and full of joy. God wants his children to be blessed and full of joy. Let's look in that same chapter, John 15. Go down to verse 11. John 15, 11. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. He said, these things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be what? For God wants his children to be blessed and full of joy, because God loves his children. Amen. So God wants his children to be saved. God wants his children to be knowledgeable. God wants his children to be nurtured. Mm -hmm. God wants his children to be in a positive relationship with him. And God wants his children to experience joy. And the way you experience joy is that you love God back and you honor him and you be appreciative of what he is doing in your life. And you be kind to those that's not kind to you. Mm -hmm. And then you'll learn how to walk in love. You don't learn how to love by being around loving people. Amen. That's just called favoritism. You do for me, I do for you. Mm -hmm. But what about you do for those that care less about you? You, you got to practice love. Love is an action word. Amen. Number six, God wants his children to be filled with the Holy Spirit and led of the Spirit. 
Don't you know the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says from the moment you hear the gospel, you don't have to turn to the scripture, but it's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. From the moment you hear the gospel preached and you believe, God comes and seal you with the Holy Spirit of promise. God Amen. comes and seal you with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then Romans 8, 14 says, those that are led of the Spirit are the sons of God. Those that are led of the Spirit are the sons of God. When you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your life and not walk in the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit, mm -hmm. then God will consider you his sons yeah. and his daughters. That's right. Look to your neighbor and say, he ain't going to be long. He ain't going to be long. Because everybody needs to know that God That's loves right. you. That's what That's encourages right. me. Amen. Don't you feel like quitting sometimes? Mm -hmm. yeah. But you got to remember his love for you. Number seven, God wants his children to care one for another. God wants us to look care one for another. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews yeah. 13, 1 says, let brotherly love what? Continue. Yeah. Let brotherly love continue. Now, I have to read Romans 15, verse 1 through 3, because a lot of people don't know this. God wants us to care one for another. I'm supposed to look out for you, and you're supposed to look out for me. That's Romans right. 15. Let's look at Romans 15. And we're going to look at verse 1 through 3. Romans 15. I want to read that. Verse 1 through 3. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless Romans his chapter name. 15, verse 1. It says, when we... Then that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Amen. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good what? Education. <laughs> for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So we that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the what? We. Weak. And not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his own good edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So we are to care one for another for the good edification of our walk and relationship with God. Now let's look at Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 and 2, showing that God wants his children to care one for another. Galatians chapter 6. Let's look at verse 1 and 2. When you find it, say, Bless his name. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's our job mm -hmm. to bear responsibility and burden of our brothers and sisters when they're going through something mm -hmm. to pray for them. God loves his children. Amen. God wants his children to be saved. Yeah. God wants his children to be knowledgeable. God wants his children to be nurtured. God wants his children to be in a positive relationship. God wants his children to be blessed and full of joy. God wants his children to be filled with the Holy Spirit and led in the Spirit. God wants his children to care one for another. Number eight, God wants his children to be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6.10 say, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Be strong in the Lord. Amen. Not weak in the Lord. Being strong in the Lord means I depend on God and I'm going to rely on God and I'm not going to do what my mind and my flesh tell me to do when I'm first in adversity. Yeah. Amen. So be strong in the Lord means no matter what happens, I'm not going to abandon God. I'm going to stay with the ship. I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to rely on the Word and the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me through those days and times of darkness. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. God wants His children to be strong in Him. Amen. Number nine, God wants His children to love Him and to love one another. You don't have to turn over. Mark 12, 30, 31 says, and that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And the second commandment is namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Amen. God wants his children to love him and to love one another. And the last one is, God disciplines all of his children 
back to holiness if they continuously sin against him and his word. Yeah. That's right. That's Amen. the last one, number 10. Amen. God disciplines all of his children back to holiness if they continuously sin against him and his word. Which means if you get out of line, yeah. and you get too far away from God, mm -hmm. he's going to discipline you, but just enough to bring you back to what? Holiness. Bye, bye, bye. That's right. Amen. He ain't going to kill you. He ain't going to kill you because you got what? Work to do. Got work to do. That's right. Let's Amen. look at our last scripture, then we're going home. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. I want you to see this. Hebrews, he disciplines us just enough to get us back to holiness. 12, start at verse 6. Hebrews 12, 6, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, it, meaning he whips us, mm -hmm. and scourges every son whom he received. Once you get into the family of God, and you start living by that word, and you get out of line, the Lord chastens us. That means the Lord disciplines us. Mm -hmm. And it may not mean that he afflicts us with sickness. He may take some of our blessings or withhold some of our mm -hmm. blessings. Yeah. But it's just to get you back to the understanding that, hey, I'm in charge. I'm the master, and you the student. That's Amen. Right, that's right. Now look, look at verse 11. And it says, Now no chastening for the present seem to be joyous. I mean, nobody likes when God starts taking and disciplining us or doing things to us. No chastening for the present seem to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by it. So when God disciplines us, mm -hmm. we don't like it. Yeah, mm -mm. we don't like it. Mm -mm. Just like we didn't like when our early parents discipline us and tell us this gonna hurt me more than hurt you. Yeah, and tell us this is for your good. I don't understand how this whipping is for my good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and how it hurting you when I'm the one who see. But it's to get you back mm -hmm. in order with the family rules. Mm -hmm. But God gonna discipline you, whether it be through uh, holding back your blessings. Mm -hmm. Making you some new adversaries. Sometimes God put the enemies out of life to make us learn, straighten up. Yeah. That's right. That's make you right. have a little conflict on the job, conflict in the neighborhood. Old car just won't run right. Mm -hmm. Every time you look up something wrong, I got to spend my money on this when I'm trying to save my money for that. It's yeah. God. It's God. It's God. Because yeah. he loves you. He could kill us, but he loves us. That's so right. he disciplines us in love. And just to get us back to open up our eyes and our ears to do the things that is pleasing him. That's right. So God loves us. Yes, yeah. he does. You need to remember that today. No matter what you face, what you go through in the future, what you're going through today, what you may experience in all your yesterdays, God still loves you. His love for you is unchanging. Yes. It's that agape love. Amen. Which means I'm going to give you this love expecting nothing in return. That's right. Amen. Amen. And that's how I want you to be toward all your fellow mankind Amen. that you come in contact with. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. Amen.